Hey everybody, welcome to my channel, Renzo here. Hope everybody's okay. Ah, let's paint the new portrait today. Okay, I'm gonna paint with bristle brushes I got here. My set of bristle brushes. Okay. And the colors I have are Titanium white, chrome yellow, cadmium orange, cadmium red, alizarin crimson, phthalo blue, ivory black, and raw umber. Okay. Let's see. Hello, Larry. Second, okay. I'm gonna pick up this brush number nine. Yeah, uh, I'm gonna use raw umber. Let's see the size of the, the head on my canvas from top to bottom. Yeah. I'm just gonna draw first the overall shape. That's a really skinny face. Yeah. I, I was just uh, I got this uh, this uh, picture from a video. You know, was just I saw this movie Detachment a long time ago. I was watching the video from the soundtrack, and I captured the screen. I think this is a pretty nice, you know, expressive picture. Okay, okay, I think that's good. Hello, Nikki. Hi. Hello, Wendy. Hello, Diane. Hello, Andrew. Start adding more. Uh, I'm gonna add more paint to this for this portrait. Let me see. Okay. First, um, I'm gonna add one more color to the to the photograph. It does blue. I'm gonna add blue, a reflected light on the shadow side of the face. Okay. And just to uh, add more color because I, I love the picture like that, pre-mute. A little bit of color is gonna be pretty nice okay tail of blue and white let's see it's gonna be kind of around here here and here yeah. okay now for the light I'm gonna mix just white and orange Touch of raw umber to knock down this color. Red. Okay. 
No, another brush for a mitun. A little bit of orange, raw umber, touch of white. Okay, I think it's too orangey. And I add a touch of black to knock it down. Okay, I added too much black. Color now looks pretty grayish. I saw this movie, this movie detachment like a couple of times. Pretty good movie, pretty sad, but pretty good. Hello Kirsten, <coughs> hello Dita, okay, now another brush, I'm going to mix a darker value, okay, a lot of raw umber, and orange, Touch white. Look at see. Uh, if I paint this reflected blue light, okay, it's gonna hit the forehead, a little bit of the upper eyelid around here. Okay, the nose. Okay. All the way down to the mandible, to the chin here a little bit and then uh, the darker value is gonna be here for the face okay this is not too dark I'm gonna add a touch of black hang on these are in crimson okay I think now it's better yeah Black. Okay, let's see. His face is pretty skinny. Mm, I'm just gonna try to see this side of the face just like something flat and try to get the shape. I think the shape is more like this. I think it means that I added too much. Um, but this light blue, I gotta move this light blue. A bit more to know into the face, okay. I'm gonna pick up this black for the hair. Let's see. 
my mistake here the light blue I'm gonna paint this light blue You can see in a row, I love those rim lights. Yeah, those rim lights are pretty nice, you know. Add more color to the paint and, and yeah. Oh yeah, just done, you know? Just add more colors to the painting. Hello Sylvia, hello Muki. Hello Ed, 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 Ed Pen. Hello Bob Kuta. Just black and white with a little bit of orange. I want a just neutral gray. Yeah, around there. Uh huh. Oh, that's good. Uh, the same color for the other side of the the background. I just want to copy the same color. I like it. Pretty neutral. It goes pretty good with the mood, you know. It's just pretty sad. feel blue paint with this video <laughs> okay let's see no. okay. light blue a little bit of this blue up here uh, up here is too dark mm. yeah Okay, anyway, uh, I gotta mix a darker blue because on the shadow it's gonna be a combination between a darker darker blue and, and brown. Because brown is the color for the shadow. Okay. Just brown. She has eyebrows that <clears throat> pretty expressive, I would say, you know. Like, yeah. Just to show how sad he is. Egg paint, what are you looking for when you refer to the eyes and nose triangle? Well, when I think about that, basically, I just think about angles. You know, like, for example, but not in this case. The thing is, usually we can just draw on a front view 
of a face, kind of a perfect triangle from the corner of the eye to the bottom of the nose. The, no, a perfect angle, you know. Here and here, that's gonna be like a 45, uh, here for example, 45 degree angle like this. Here and here. And we split this in two and we get this, you know, this angle here. Yeah, just, just that. Uh, it's, it, it, it's not gonna work for every face. Yeah, sadly, it's not gonna work for every face, but I, I just, uh, any technique out there, it's not perfect. Any method is not perfect because a face, you know, change from person to person, proportions and all of that. Okay, but helps. Instead, instead of just uh, trying to get everything by eye, it's better when we got the combination, you know, between just, how do you say, eyeballing, you know, like just observation and measurement. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna use a liner brush. No, not yet. I need to paint more. I'm gonna paint the hair. For the hair, I'm gonna use a, a, a synthetic brush. You know, it's easier with a synthetic brush, brush and a little bit of linseed oil just to spray the paint like that. So easy. Okay. I just uh, lease it oil to paint uh, backgrounds or you know maybe the jacket things that I gotta paint a little bit faster or I gotta spread the paint faster and then I don't use any medium for for the face for the skin okay I forgot something one second. Okay. Where's my brush? I was using a linear brush of here is okay. Hello Sharon Don't forget to show me some love just by clicking the like button. Okay. <laughs> you don't want to click the like button? Who said that?
Hello Ida. Hello Arabi. Explain saying if the face is turned sideways more more can the triangle reference work? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So many I mean so many videos on my channel. You see me doing some kind of triangle between the eyes and the nose. It works pretty good. I need uh, a little bit of green here. I got this uh, email green. I like it a lot. This one, I'm gonna put it here. somebody painting with me I mean not painting this obviously this portrait anything and waiting for me to speak and I don't say anything <laughs> I got this little cut and when I'm here just painting and I'm out here at the house she gets into my sandals into my shoes on 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 my shoes I gotta move it yes you know move it, move it. then when my mom uh, get uh, get home this little cut can't just forget about me. <laughs> you know, I have five cats. With this one, this is number six. The other ones are in a different house. Nikki saying you are using really thick application on this one, it seems. I like the way you change up style according to your mood or the image. Yeah, you know what? Uh, I, I like the photograph, but I, fi I find it kind of boring in terms of color. It's, it's, pretty, it's pretty expressive, but I don't know. I think adding more paint is gonna it could add something different to the face. I could, I could be wrong, but, you know, who cares? <laughs> it's just a painting, one, one more painting.
Yeah. I don't know why I have six cats, you know. I'm not like a cat guy. Uh, it's more like a dog guy. But it's just the thing that... Uh, it's just it's just about rescue then. Yeah. This little cat was upside upside my door just crying and I don't know, I don't know where did where did she come? The thing is my neighbor she has a really big dog and she was, she was, she was, the dog was about, was about to eat this little cat. And I didn't think it twice, and I grabbed it, you know, by the neck, and throw it inside the house. And, uh, and then, you know, now I got one more cat. <laughs> Simple as that. Maybe somebody somebody's looking for her, but I didn't see any anybody any anyone asking about it, this this cat. I remember one once my my daughter's cat just got lost and you know the cats just just love to go on the roofs from house to house especially in the neighborhoods that there is there are no tall you know high buildings and then the thing that she was she was really really sad and it was like hey just put some, how do you say, like, when you put a price, no, no, you say, hey, this cat is missing, we gave, like, $50 who find it. And uh, my, my son and my daughter, they, they were like, yeah, let's put a price, and, and, you know, it's like everybody put the price, like, let's say, $20. And $20 is okay, you know. If you find a cat and you take it to the to the owner's house, twenty dollars is pretty nice. Some people put like fifty dollars when they are just like kind of desperate to try to find a cat. And my daughter put like five hundred dollars. Like, what? <laughs> and the funny thing is, like, a, a, it's a, a bunch of kids saw the you know the paper on the doors on the door and, and, and the kid just knocked, knocked the door and said, so hey, you're offering for real like $500 for finding your cat? Yeah, we're gonna find it, you know, the little kids, they were like, let's find the, the, the cat. They were like at six of them just looking for the cat. <laughs> you know? And my daughter, she was crying because it was been, she was missing for, uh, she was missing for two days. And then the next day, it was just on the door, just there, scratching the door. Yeah, just like that. Nobody got any any money, and everybody was happy at the end. Okay, uh, I think I'm gonna add more blue here. Yeah. Okay, let's see. Mm. Yeah, I'm gonna paint a little bit more. I'm gonna paint the jacket or the, the shirt. Yeah. Hello, Mr. Herb Jones. Have you ever been nervous about starting a complicated double portrait? Double portrait, like painting two, two, two people in a portrait. Yeah, 
I don't know, I don't know about being nervous uh, painting, but I don't think like you know I'm nervous. I think more like uh, when I paint, you know, a couple. It's just like uh, I'm pretty uh, just worried about the size, the relationship between the size of one head and the other. Yeah, yeah, it's more yeah, just just like that. But you know, uh, if I paint here on YouTube, yeah, I mean I could paint it. Just just like trying to do my best, but. Upside of, of upside of YouTube, I would trace it. Yeah, that would be more relaxing for some in some way, and I would be pretty sure that I'm gonna get a good portrait at the end. You know, I'm not so nervous when I paint here on YouTube uh, because I got a nice conditions here to paint. Like I got a big photograph to my left, you know, same size, pretty and pretty close to my to my canvas. I got uh, like a smaller window, like this size, where I see uh, the painting is, and it's just like looking at the painting from I don't know, like ten steps away. Which is pretty good, yeah. and uh, what else? Uh, you know, when I've been ner nervous about painting is when I, I have painted from life, like a real life model, yeah. which is different. You know, uh, sometimes the conditions are not the best, and sometimes I painted from let's say natural light which is pretty nice but I don't like it that much I don't like it thinking about about how the light is gonna change it's gonna affect the painting it's gonna affect how, what I see okay and I usually when I painted from life I just got like an hour or an hour and a half yeah, people's people got bored like seen somebody painting for like more than an hour I mean people that don't care about paint uh, art and usually the demos the last demos I did it was just going to schools you know to get new young people to get to the school of art and since we don't we didn't know how much people how much of those young kids love art we just we did a demo we did so many demos for so for all of them and that was pretty funny because I remember I was painting I didn't see the people you know behind me but I, we started usually with let's say 50 people 50 students I was painting and after like 40 minutes I turned my back and there were just 20 20 students and then after like um, an hour, they were just like five. <laughs> you know, it usually we ended up the session with five students. And you can tell that, you know, all those five, they were pretty excited about, you know, seeing me painting. They were like, eh, hey, that's pretty nice. Like, I love it. I love how you paint. I want to study this. You know, I draw and I draw a lot. And that was, that was amazing. That feeling that those little kids just loving what you do and trying to do the same. You know. And that's how the School of Art got new 
new students. And I'm not speaking about the School of Art here on, on the Capiro, on Lima. I'm speaking about the School of Art in province, okay? which is different, obviously, because uh, the School of Art here in Lima is, like they say, more popular. They don't do too much uh, publicity, and or they always have a lot of people that want to get and study art. It's not like a, a lot of people, but, you know, enough, like, to, I'm going to show you, to, 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 you know, to keep the, the School of Art just full. I'm going to zoom in to show you all the amount of paint. Okay, what do you think? I like it. I like the blue. I added, you notice, a little bit of green below the eye around here. A touch of red, a touch of green, a touch of orange. Okay. I'm gonna just uh, add some details. Here's the zoom. No, I move this little button here. So. Kumar is asking is it bad that I use grid for my outlines every time? Oh I would suggest try to balance things out, you know, just uh, if you think that you need, that's okay, but just keep in mind that uh, that it's, you think about like, you know, I'm going to think about something, you know, I'm going to keep do, uh, using grid for this month. Next month, I'm just going to draw by eye. Or no, or just one painting, just draw, you draw by eye, by observation, and the next painting you, you use a grid, or you just, uh, what's the, I forgot the word, you just trace it, yeah? Keep keep uh, keep balance. Yeah. If you trace it every time, or you use a grid, and you end up with a, a good painting, pretty sure you, you're gonna do it okay if you just draw. I have seen that a few times. You know. But people using uh, a grid or tracing and getting a nice painting. And when I see that, I, see, I, I think, you know, like this person is good in drawing because when, uh, just, just because of this reason, uh, I remember a couple of people saying, no, I don't want to just draw. I, wanna, I don't want to draw because I never drew in my life. I always trace it. But when I see the paintings, when I saw the paintings, all, all of them were pretty good. And you know, I said, oh, you know, it's, I'm pretty sure you're gonna do it okay. You just, you just draw by eye. And this person was, no, no, I'm gonna, not gonna do it. But you know, but just do it as a practice. Okay, I will do it. And and she did it. And she did it good. Okay, why? Because just the just seeing that she didn't lose. They trace it, you know, or she didn't lose the drawing that she did with the grid. It was for me an indication that she was she was good on drawing. The thing is, she didn't try it. She didn't even try it. Okay. And the same way that that happens, you know, the same way if I see somebody that is just like even that starts the painting with uh, tracing if you see that some mistakes or something has moved too much on the process of painting I would say to that person just draw by eye more than anything because you need to strengthen your you know your skills about just drawing by observation Mm 
Mm -hmm. People are so, so scared to see their own mistakes when they draw. And that's good, I understand that. I didn't like, I didn't like it when I saw my own mistakes. Mm. You just gotta do it. I need, uh, I'm trying to get the roundness here of this upper eyelid. Obviously the upper eyelid is kind of wrapping, wrapping around the, the eyeball. Hello Francesco, hello Gary. Squinting down my eyes, you know, to see more, <laughs> see more values. A little bit of red to knock down the green. I like it, but just too greenish. I was just waiting to see if uh, how I look how I, how I look after you know a few minutes. Victoria Benedict, hello, I'm so scared too. I always think, what if they don't like the portrait I made? Yeah. <laughs> hey, that's gonna, that's gonna happen every time, you know? Yeah. We shouldn't care, you know, that much, but we care, it's, yeah. and we care more when it's about, um, you know, when we're trying to find a style, your own style, then I would say don't, don't care about that, because that would be your own language, your own way to, to, to your own interpretation, but if you're trying to copy, you know, likeness and all of that, yeah, you gotta just live with that fear of failing every time. What else we can do? I mean, that definitely happens to me. No, I mean, not that much, I think. No. It's not like I don't, I don't care, but it's just like I know that I have more and more opportunities to fix the painting again and again. And I'm not speaking about just one session like I do here. 
when you're speaking about like let the painting dry you go over again use a mirror you know take a picture put it upside down all those things and even get to the point sometimes that I just Photoshop and overlap the painting on top of the oops I got some paint on my head on top of the on top of the photograph you know like uh, I make the the painting transparent and, and overlap it then I see what is wrong I mean that's the last thing I do when when uh, I don't know what, what else to do you know anything anything and even using an app I saw so many apps out there that helps with I, in the case I'm speaking about especially painting portraits because here is when <clears throat> we care a lot about other people's opinions because people are gonna, are gonna judge the a portrait it's gonna, it's gonna, it's kind of easy to, to know when something is wrong because we all, we all know how a face looks. Okay, hello, yes, yeah, yeah. Uh, when so, at, at your level, you can relax and let all your vast knowledge kick in, kick in. <laughs> yeah. you amaze me having confidence to paint life Marie Lou too <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. the thing is that I uh, know even even failing on painting something it's not gonna stop you for paint, from painting. Yeah. I mean, I I have seen people failing on painting so many times, and they don't stop painting. Yeah. The con what happens that they got better, but it's, it's it's even not about getting better. Sometimes, it's just about painting. Yeah. But when we do something so many times, we get better. Definitely, definitely, you know, but I have seen so many of of my friends, painter friends, just painting because they they have this need inside them, you know, they need to paint, they need to do it, it's not, a, it's not about the result anymore, it's not about how look or bad is the painting anymore. At some point it's about just painting. Mm. At the same time I gotta say that I know in my case, for example, when I paint a commission, uh, definitely it's about is about the uh, what the client says, and I, I'm just more worried about likeness and and improve from painting to painting.
bit of pink a bit more I want <coughs> another color I got here. Uh, where's my pink? I got this vivid rose. I like it. I like this color. I'm gonna put it here. Even that's a cheaper one. You see, you know, it's PBO. It's not for a student. It's not like. For a professional, the, the, the tinting strength of this color is pretty good. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, okay, let, let, let me read some comments here. What percentage of opacity works best? Uh, do you mean on the face? It depends, you know, but Usually we, we got opacity on any, any, any light color is opaque. Uh, darker color is usually transparent. It, why? Because a lighter color has a lot of, a lot of uh, white. Okay. Uh, now. Okay, uh, that's something that has to do with color theory, you know. You know, if you work with watercolor, that's different. There's a lot of transparency, even on the lights. Speaking about oil paints, when you paint the lights, the lights has to be thicker and opaque. That's white. White is opaque. It's the more opaque color. And that gives a lot of light. Okay? Now, percentage, oh, that's difficult to say. That's pretty difficult to say, you know, because it depends on so many things. What you're painting, for example, you know, I, 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 wouldn't, I wouldn't say a percentage, you know, yeah, so many options. Um, uh, thank you, Violet. Hello, Fred. This is the only time I can uh, truthfully say I enjoy watching paint dry. Okay, <laughs> thank you. Paint dry. Paint dry. I didn't get it, but I think anyway. Kumar said, last thing I want to know is how I fix my blending. I always mess and they end up looking muddy. Do I need a separate brush for blending? Oh yeah, of course. You want to blend a lot, you need a clean brush for blending. And you need to clean it every time that you're going to blend. Like when I blend, uh, this, this, the blending of this painting, for example, is, is not about uh, the a different brush. But it's not about, you know, it's about just the tip of the brush going on the other color and create a mixture there. In that you see a transition, yeah. But when you wanna blend, blend like a pretty smooth out a lot the surface, then you need a clean brush, softer clean brush. This is the brush that I use for blending that you're gonna see me maybe using it in a lot of videos. I'm gonna put it here. Look at this. This is a bigger one. It has the same, you know. It's basically a mop brush. If I go with this brush on top, I could, I, I could blend some areas. I let me do it here, for example. Here. Okay, I'm gonna zoom in to show the difference. 
I think it's pretty clear, yeah? No. You, you stay here. The thing is, when we blend anything, we basically mix in the colors. The, if you're getting muddy colors, it's, it's just that you need more experience about the oil paints. When you're starting to know what happens, you know, when you blend, you're starting to say, hey, you know, I know that the color that I have on my palette is not going to be the same on the painting, especially if I try to smooth out everything. Okay. Oh, one thing that I would love to blend, it does for the glare, that would, that would be the shadow. To create some depth on that shadow, you know, it's kind of, I don't like that the shadow just pop forward too much. For the light, it's okay. Okay. Well, that's better, I like it better like this. Another thing I could say about getting muddy colors when we're trying to blend. Okay, uh, yeah. Uh, if you're trying to practice, just keep in mind that your goal is not getting, it's not smoothing, it's smoothing, it's smoothing out the painting or blend a lot. That's never the goal. That's that's kind. Of, that, that, that would say that's the last step. It is about a style, but. What we want to be sure is about getting the values. Okay. If the values are good, pretty sure the colors are going to be good too. Okay. Usually they work hand by hand, color and values. Okay. Color and values, you know, a color has a value. Okay, I'm gonna use a little bit of this pink. Uh, I want this this one here. Too pinky. Yeah, too pinky. Oops. Again, I gotta, I gotta take the cold. That's my, that's my mom. <laughs> Sorry. Hello. See? No, it's to YouTube. So YouTube Te Si No ¿Qué te puedo decir? No sé qué, no sé qué hago. Mm. Ok. Ok. So difficult to solve any problem while I'm here. Yeah, you cannot do too much.
Sí. I think I mean when you overlap images in Photoshop. Oh, you mean that? Yeah. Okay, when you create two layers on Photoshop, you're gonna see usually the uh, the option about opacity, and you play with that. I usually play with that, like to the left, to the right, more or less opacity, until I see both. When I see both, you know, I don't know about numbers that much, like one percentage. But when I see both, that's when I know that I'm going to be able to see what's wrong with, you know, and be able to fix it, because that's the idea. Another, another thing that I was thinking about, about muddy colors, why don't you try to, if you know one thing, that the colors are going to mix on the paint, not just on the palette. What if you pick up pure green, pure, pure red, for example. I, I, just, I just have a little bit of pure red here. I know it's going to get mixed, and then I can add this red here. And just by moving the brush like this, I'm mixing the color. But if I just try to copy the exact color that I see on the photograph on that specific area and I mix on the palette, when I put the paint, it's going to get mixed with the color that is already there. And then I'm not going to see the color. Okay? You kind of need to kind of foresee what's going to happen when you mix the colors. What's going to be the result? It's just like uh, I tell you, okay, paint this, the background yellow, and then add blue on top. What's going to happen? You're going to get some green. That happens with oil paints. That's the same example when you got a muddy color. The only thing that means that you need more experience, experience painting. Because when you know that, you're trying just to take precautions, just trying to say, you know, I'm not going to use this color, I'm not going to mix this uh, red, I'm not going to put this reddish color on top of this greenish area, because you mix red and green, you get brown, okay? And you can say the brown is a muddy color, yeah? But here, for example, I'm not, I'm not getting the same color that I, here I have on the palette. No way. I'm just using this color here on top, and I mix it. Okay. Unless you want to just pick up paint and lay down the brush stroke and don't touch it, yeah, 
but that's different. Usually we we need to just go over that area and move the brush stroke a little bit. I think I need to narrow the face there a little bit. Mm. Oh, I need to work on the nostril. Okay, let's see more questions. Okay, uh, uh, Rims, Rim, Rims K is asking me, do you remember what got you into art or when did you realize you have actual interest doing more creative work? <laughs> yeah, it's pretty funny, you know. Uh, my mom is a painter. My dad is a painter. One and it was a painter one uncle i have a painter the other uncle is a musician okay it's kind of you know i was thinking i'm gonna study something and i i go to here it's pretty common this you say i want to be a doctor they say i want to be an engineer or anything and, and you 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 think you go over the process of preparation you know and you take usually a year to study to get better on that and you prepare for the test because the universities they take like a hundred students every year let's say but a thousand students are just presenting to to try to get a, a you know a place and it means that you gotta compete with a lot of people. And that's why a lot of young people just studying like one year to get better and to get into the university. And then any university you choose. Okay, and I did I did that. Okay. And I was studying, studying, and it was pretty hard, okay? And I realized, okay, it looks like I'm not good for this thing, yeah. yeah. And my mom, she was like, hey, you can study art, you know? And I, I was like, hmm, mm. I don't like all the struggle. Because when, when you're an artist, you, you deal with a lot of rejection, they say, you know. It's not like uh, you, you have many ups and downs. I didn't want that, I didn't like that. Like having money someday and then having money some a month and the next month it was like, mm, it wasn't that good. Okay. And, but the thing is, I wasn't good for anything more than art. Uh, I tried to study one thing and, and another thing, and, mm, or preparing myself for one thing, and, and, and no, you know, it was like, no. Okay, and then went to the School of Art, 
and I found it that was pretty easy to get into the School of Art. And I said, okay, this is my place. I'm not gonna do too much, just paint. And then I presented, I, I, I went the day to take the test and it was about, I was drawing something, you know, drawing a, a sculpture. And I thought I did it pretty good. Yeah, it was like, yeah, I did it good. Yeah, and the thing is I did it kind of, you know, not that, not that good, not that bad, but good enough to move to the next test. Because it was first one test, you don't, you don't, you don't get good qualification on that test, that, that's, you're out. Then I moved to the next one. Yeah. And I don't know a drawing I was, I think. And I did it okay. Yeah, that was pretty good, you know. Easy peasy. <laughs> and then the last day, it was just about theory. And I said, oh my God. Oh my God. Anyway, I did it. And then the next day, they they published, they post, you know, they pu published the, the results. Okay, and just in one uh, long piece of paper, and they stick it on the door. No, no, inside the School of Art. We are the list of all the people that got into the School of Art. Yeah. And I went there that day, kind of confident that, uh, you know, this is my place. My mom's a painter, my dad's a painter. Everybody paints, everybody does art. Yeah, you know, it's like I'm cursed. I'm gonna do the same. You know, <laughs> I'm cursed. <laughs> and I went to see my name, they're looking for my name, I didn't find it. Oh my God. I didn't find my name, it wasn't there. I didn't get into the School of Art. It was like, what? You know, I'm a good drawer. I did it good. And then, you know, it was like, okay, now what? Now what am I gonna say my mom? I didn't get into the School of Art? How is that possible? You know, and I was already working as a painter because I was helping my mom to paint portraits. <laughs> yeah. And then I was just there hanging out with some some people. And I was like, okay, if I go home, you know, just like pretty sad. Plus this like this guy that I'm painting today. Yeah. And a failure. And a loser. And then I heard one of the guys saying, hey, you know, they're gonna give opportunity to 10 more people to get into the School of Art. 10 more people, I say, wow, that's pretty nice, that's pretty good, yeah? Damn, I don't know why. But when I, when I went to, you know, everybody was there just waiting for the new list, a small, a short list of 10 names, my name, my name was my, was there on the list, and I was wow, I did it, you know. Yeah, don't tell anyone, you know. I didn't say my mom that, because she's gonna think I'm a failure. She's gonna, she's not gonna know because she doesn't speak English. That means you're the only one you know that knows that, okay? <laughs> Uh, okay. <laughs> Wanna look for some paintings. Is this a canvas painter? No, no, painter. No, it's not a painter. It's a canvas, but no, not a painter. Sometimes I paint on on painters. No, no, not for this one. Okay. That was pretty funny. And, uh, and now, uh, uh, 
and the only thing that I, I regret about the School of Art, you know, is uh, is something that is about it's about just teaching you how to paint, and that's pretty good, you know, like yeah, paint. You say yeah, okay, I'm getting better and getting better and practicing a lot. That's good, yeah, yeah, that's good. But now, what about that? What about when you finished studying art? Yeah, that's that's the thing that nobody said about that. Nothing is to know that you're out on your own. Hmm. Yeah. I think that's something that the School of Art is gonna fix that even today. It's just like uh, they teach you how to paint, but there's not any, how do you say, labor market, market labor? With the kind of, you know, I don't know. I don't, I don't know, I, I, I don't even know how, uh, uh, pretty sure, I mean, my daughter, she's studying animation, and she knows people, like, uh, for the last years of that career, and, you know, and they say that they're already working, they didn't even finish, and there they was this institution, this, uh, how do you say, uh, institution, academy, or whatever you want to call it, or university that they worried about the students. And they looked, you know, uh, for the best students, they tried to find, uh, you know, a company that hired the best students they have. That's something pretty nice. That doesn't happen in art. Just, just finish up and you're your own. That's it. I don't know if that's possible to do something like that, but, you know, who knows? I mean, what I mean is to find you a place and to study, to teach, or whatever. To start, to, sorry, to work, a place to work. Uh, I didn't get too much. This darker value here. See some questions. What type of surface preparation before painting? Oh, uh, I prepared my canvas with gesso. Three or four layers of gesso.
Okay, uh, I like the orange on the background, but mm, okay, that wasn't my, my idea. Keep the, the keep the the orange. I wanted to paint just everything grayish, but now I'm thinking that maybe it's gonna be a good idea to keep it. Anyway, I'm gonna just do it. But I thought from the very beginning. Okay, that was just and make this all this grayish. I think it goes with the mood, you know. Okay. Okay, I need more blue on the face.
why they look they, this color looks kind of purple it's more bluish blue here and there Oh, let's see some comments. <clears throat> Hello, Marvat. Thank you. Thank you forever. Zero drag, drag, uh, dragon, dragon. Oh no. <laughs> uh, which one is 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 the photo? <laughs> It doesn't look like Adrian Brody. Oh, I got to I got to reduce the hair on one side of the head. Too much hair. Yeah.
okay let's see the blue 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 Okay, a little bit of black for the hair. No. More coffee. <laughs> I've been painting an hour and a half. It's not too much, you know. It's not too much to get tired. Touches of blue. Okay, oh, okay. Let me see. I'm gonna add a touch of green. A little bit of green here. Okay, what about that? Let me see from a distance. Mm, no. Okay. Blue again on top. This is phthalo blue, but for some reason, it looks like my camera doesn't like phthalo blue. That because it's show it's showing like some kind of purple.
see clearly. I need to zoom in the photograph. Uh, you know, capture the screen from the video, from the uh, the soundtrack, and this there, uh, obviously it's not a high resolution photograph. I'm gonna zoom in. What do you think? Highlight on the nose. Uh, uh, you know, the photograph is not like a sticky, like inside. There's no reflected light. Look at the pink on the e the, on the upper eyelid. Too pinkish. Eh? What do you think? I should knock it down. That pink and the light is green. Okay. I'm adding a little bit of green. A touch of yellow. Touch of yellow here. I'm, gonna knock, I'm going to knock down the pink on the upright lid. Just there. Okay, 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 oh, okay, uh, the mandible, but you know, I don't see that clearly, okay, yeah, that's it here, yeah, is that okay, yeah, I think it's okay.
and just smoothing out the background that way you know uh, just thinking about keeping the attention on on the face and reducing a little bit of movement because a brush stroke creates movement like the brush strokes here yeah, on the jacket or the background now I don't want movement I I want just a little bit of movement that is created by by this kind of tiny brush strokes on the face the accumulation of paint on the face okay and I want to just here that's why I'm making all around pretty soft and even just killing some edges okay and I think that complete this kind of quiet and sad scene okay Okay, uh, what do you think? Okay. Well, thank you, thank you. Pretty nice comments here. Thank you so much. Oh, Victoria is asking me, are you going to do the critique session tomorrow? Yeah. Yeah, you know, when I don't do the critic sessions on Fridays, I do them on Saturdays. Yeah, uh, Fridays is at night, Saturdays is in the afternoon for me. Okay, and... Um, yeah, I'm speaking about critiques that I do on Patreon. You know, if you join my Patreon, you gotta look for the, the specific tier that says critiques. You can submit a painting, and I do a live critique for you know for my patrons. Yeah, and what I do is. I make corrections on the paintings and I use Photoshop to, to paint on top of the painting. The way I show mistakes and I give suggestions. Okay. Thank you, Nikki. Thank you, Rims. Looks amazing. First time coming across your channel. Oh, oh welcome, welcome. You definitely get me back into painting. Oh, that's pretty good. <laughs> yeah. Maybe not, but anyway, it looks, you know, it could be pretty good. <laughs> oops, oops, oops. Just notice that it needs more hair. Thank you, Sagittarius. Hello, Ben. Thank you. Thank you, Jis. Thank you, Waria. 
Did you fret? Victoria. Eight, eight, eight pin. Hello, Mark. Okay, mm, let's see, let's see. Okay, I think almost I'm almost done. Yeah. A little bit of blue here on the jacket and, and the shoulder too. Oh, the hair. I'm using just the tip of the brush. Because this brush is just a gut paint, just the tip. I could get any color. And I go lightly on the air, almost just. You press too much, you lose that effect. No, I think that's enough. Now I can do the same with a smaller brush after doing that with the bigger one.
Okay. Okay. Almost two hours. I think that's a good time for this practice. Hello, Dejan. Okay, uh, do you purposely leave harder texture on the bright part of the face to bring more attention to it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, because, you know, usually on the lights, this is pretty common, the lights, we always put more paint. This is the way to represent the lights. On the shadow, we can just, we could even leave the shadows pretty transparent. It, what I mean is, almost no paint, uh, transparent, a transparent dark color. Raw umber is a, the color that we mostly use for the shadows. It's transparent, it's dark, it's pretty good. But something that's pretty common, just add a lot of a lot of paint on the lights. Okay. Because this is not this is not about transparency. Water color is different. No paint at all on the lights. Less paint it creates more transparency. The light is the paper. In this case, the light is the oil paint. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think that's enough. Uh, thank you. Rim saying, spend another 20 minutes of adding more details. Yeah, that's the thing that sometimes that usually what happens when I spend more time. Yeah, you know, but but this painting is not about details, you know. I think it's more about expression. It's, it's more about uh, texture. And it's more about color. Even that there's not too much color, but I try to add more colors, you know, on the face. As you can see, the touch of yellow on the nose, green. And there is a light blue, green, red. There is a little bit of pink. Okay, I tried to add colors here and there, okay, and keeping, keep, keep, uh, just the same value for all those colors to try to keep the harmony. Tiny accents to make the an area brighter, like, like for example, the yellow highlight on the nose or on the upper eyelid pink you know and a green highlight it does uh, that's the use of uh, the simultaneous contrast when you use two opposite colors when you know the when opposite colors usually repel each other but the right proportions they they're gonna help you to get uh, more contrast and vivid colors and make usually one color just glow in this case the highlight on the upper eyelid is green the upper eyelid is pink this you know green light green is should glow showing more of light a vivid light on the upper eyelid okay that's that's the idea Okay, I think that's it. Uh, okay, the eyebrow. I wanna add a little bit of blue to the eyebrow. Okay, thank you so much for being here. See you all next week. Okay, maybe next week I'm gonna just make a live uh, twice in the week because I'm gonna paint. I'm gonna just, it's been a long time since I painted a pastel portrait and I'm gonna paint a pastel portrait. Maybe it's gonna be Tuesday and see you Thursday. Okay. Uh, <laughs> ring saying, ring saying, you brought just enough light in this very depressing painting. <laughs> That's good. 
Okay. Okay, that's it. Now you can go, you know, as usual. I'm gonna stay just a few minutes. Leave me alone. <laughs> I'm just kidding, you know. I'm here because of you, or... Difficult to stop. Every time that I'm about to turn off the camera, I'm starting to see things to fix here and there. It's like the painting starts screaming at me. Don't stop. Help. Help here. Help here and there. Don't leave me like that. And when, when I see my own video, you know, I see, uh, I see myself like adding some touches, like just like this, like, it, I mean, maybe I, sometimes I think that didn't change the painting that much. But just to ease my soul, you know, to ease my anxiety about leaving the painting unfinished. Some light blue on the brown lip, a little bit. Oops, that's too bright. A little bit here. Okay, well. <laughs> okay. Oh, Nikki said, I want to buy a coffee, but there is not a link for me. We will flow. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna put the link here for you all, and after I go, I hope you all buy my coffee. No, no, I'm king, I'm king! This is free, okay? But the coffee is always welcome, but it's free. <laughs> Let me look for my link, anyway. Here's the link. <laughs> uh, thank you, Saji. There is the blue on the lip makes a huge difference. Oh yeah. <laughs> mm. Yeah. You know, I'm thinking about ages right now because uh, I didn't mention anything about ages, but if you know my channel, you know that always thinking about ages here and there, a softened age, a sharp age, okay. And the ear, oh my god, I have a bronze with ears, okay. Just one more minute. I think it's, good. I think it's not good enough. Hmm? What do you think? Okay, now that's it. Yeah. Yeah, now I gotta go. I gotta take a rest. 
today is drawing night. <sighs> if you say it's Peru year, yeah. <laughs> okay. Too much coffee can never hurt. Yeah. No, no. Too much hurts. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, thank you so much everybody. Now I uh, I go for real. Bye everybody. Mm. Oh, I got a coffee. Thank you so much, Nikki. I got two coffees. Oh, wow, that, that was fast. And I got a huge cup of coffee. Thank you so much, Sharon. Sharon Bonnard and Nikki Swinson. Uh. Okay, bye everybody, bye.